Wow, what a move in the cable. The uh, British pound versus the US dollar had a little or not so little flash crash of 5% overnight. Went down from 1.26 to 1.20. Um, there were um, some uh, talking of some information coming from Bloomberg about that, about algos and algo trading, which had malfunctions. And actually, there was um, the order book trying out on the bid side for um, several seconds and that led to this flash crash when the uh, British pound to the US dollar went down from 1.26 to 1.20 and this morning it's, it's rallied all the way back to where this all started. So pound uh, still um, a, a lot of volatility in the British pound, a lot of volatility even in the um, Japanese yen which had been um, going up versus the US dollar for, since the start of the year. It has been going crawling up and up and up and now it has left this uptrend. So the yen is getting weaker again which is positive for the Nikkei and the Japanese um, uh, stock markets. Then we've got the um, market for WTI and Brent crude oil. Um, both have triggered or are about to trigger on a weekly basis, a weekly closing basis, their inverted head and shoulders bottoming formation, which actually um, activates a price target of $78. If you like, project the height from the head of the inverted head and shoulders formation to the um, neckline. If you project that from the um, actual breakout point, which where we are actually today, then you get a price target of 78 from a technical perspective. So there's a big bottoming formation, a breakout of that, an activation of that bottoming process in oil. So that's very interesting. There are even more cuts coming from the OPEC. That's at least what markets expect or what the markets expect. And that is some market that is really, really interesting. Then we've got the precious metals, which are in expectations that the Federal Reserve will hike rates in December are going lower and lower and lower. There has been a um, correction, a continuation of that yesterday. Um, the price of gold is now in a support zone, um, which actually could lead to a stabilization. We've got the NFP payrolls data coming out today, um, which might be um, like uh, creating a lot of volatility there in, in the price of gold. I do not want to say that it's about to turn up again, but it's still bullish. If you look at the yearly chart, if you look at um, autumn 2015 until now, there has been a rounded bottom, a breakout out of that rounded bottom. And at the time that rounded bottom uh, was formed in the chart, there was very bearish um, sentiment in the market uh, of gold. Nobody really wanted to hear anything about gold anymore. Um, and so uh, out of that um, was a, or out of that, um, that was a rounded bottom, markets broke out and from a Dow theory perspective, from a trend following perspective, the technical downtrend ended this year or has been interrupted, has been interrupted, but there's no new uptrend that has formed yet. So this correction that we have now is very natural actually and is in the, in the perspective of the yearly chart is still not bearish. It will turn bearish though if uh, prices would go lower than 1199 so 1199 is the make or break point for a price tag make or break price tag for bulls and bears should gold drop below 1199 then it will turn bearish from a technical perspective everything above 1199 is still bullish for the price of gold so do not ignore that market for now then there was the vice president from the ECB, Mr. Constancio, saying that the Bloomberg taper reports are wrong. There's nothing um, that the ECB has not really um, said that they are ready to taper the QE program. They will at least have that QE program until March of 2017. And the reports are plainly wrong. That's what Constancio, the vice president, said. And then there was the vice president of the Federal Reserve, um, his name is Stanley Fisher, saying that the natural rate, the natural rate of interest has fallen so low and has fallen 
to low levels, to such low levels, that this could signal that we are stuck in a low growth environment in the United States. And because um, spendings and savings patterns have altered worldwide since the financial crisis, the natural rate of interest globally is much, much lower than it has been before. And so it might be that unconventional policy is here to stay. And uh, I want to remind you that's not somebody who is saying that, it's the Vice President of the Federal Reserve saying that unconventional monetary policy is still or is here to stay. And that means, or what does a low natural rate mean? Some um, expect that the low, the, that the natural rate of interest is near zero. So anything the Fed does to hike rates above that natural rate is actually leading to a too tight monetary policy, which is like um, uh, yeah, decreasing the speed at which the economy could expand. And so it's a big question mark still from some members of the Federal Open Market Committee, which sets the future monetary policy in the United States um, about where the rates should go. So some estimate that the natural rate of interest is at zero or near zero. And so there is not much room the Fed has to, um, to hike rates. Even though markets are expecting that in December there might be a rate hike coming. So keep that in mind. The IMF has the reasons for why the natural rate of interest is so low. And that is the worldwide debt levels, 152 trillion in debt. That's what the IMF has calculated. And that's a new record. Some um, within the IMF think that it's a big risk that there might be a global deleveraging coming. So the United States, that is what we know, has um, meaningfully deleveraged. The private sector in the United States has uh, decreased its debt levels since the year 2008 and 2009, but the debt levels in countries like Brazil and China, they took even more debt. And uh, the worldwide um, debt to GDP ratio has increased from 200% in the year 2002 to 225% today. So it's um, globally, on a global scale, it has um, increased and increased and increased year by year. And that is actually um, decreasing the growth potential of the world economy. So what Stanley Fisher says, which is um, the number two in the Federal Reserve after Janet Yellen, what he says is that unconventional monetary policy is a tool that is here to stay.